see market makes up about 80% of all cannabis cannabis sales still in Ontario. So if we expect to bring people into that that community, the legal community, it's obviously we we know the issues about quality and pricing which are improving, but I think it's more about the experience, you know, like yeah. like the Apple-esque look, for example. Yeah. Some people are into it, but you know, the biggest fear that legacy users have always voiced was that corporate takeover of cannabis retail going in and everything is just super uber polished right yeah. it's nice to have a high-end feel but you know we don't want to go into these stores feeling like we're in operating room, that doesn't right? speak to everyone i mean yeah. it's, it's funny oh, I'll sorry you go no ahead. i'll explain <laughs> to you why it doesn't work okay so the apple store um when they were creating the store they had this test bench yeah. right yeah. and they would build tables and where things would plug in and it was all under the assumption that you would put the product into your hands yeah and it was a blank canvas for you to envision the product in your life gotcha right so we're like okay great this is wonderful the stores open up they're incredibly successful and then you see time and time again retailers copy and paste yeah that. and we've seen it the in microsoft store in cannabis like as well yeah. right the problem though is that you never put the product no in your tan hands. tangible aspect mm. to that. You can't You cannot touch, envision smell. the product. And, and, you don't have any legal experience. dispensaries, you can't do that. Whereas that's the I think that's again legacy dispensaries have that up because they're they're here you go and they're laying it out in front of the jar. So you can get that little bit more you can you can forgive some of the some of the uh, like police police holes in the front door mm -hmm. and, and say, Oh, I can <laughs> smell it though. Right, yeah. <laughs> right? right. Like you've got that yeah. aspect. So there's no envisioning the product. You can't put it into your hand. You can't own it as a consumer. Yeah. And the pricing and the the point of the how you use the product changes in your life. Yeah. So you go into the Apple store with the intention to purchase something maybe once a year. Okay. Like yeah. Yeah. but we're looking to create different types of behaviors mm -hmm. than that. Mm -hmm. So you want to like there's more of a convenience store aspect to that where it's got what I need when I need it mm -hmm. here but based on location. I think one of the proxies I've been using is do does the dispensary have exactly what I want depending on where it is mm -hmm. and I'm happy that that no longer happens. Mm -hmm. I'm happy that I have to go to one dispensary for one thing, another dispensary for another thing because mm -hmm. that to me means the retailer is is has a little bit more intelligence on what their their demographic and their area needs. Mm -hmm that and sure. you can't expect a team to know it all totally mm -hmm. so if you're going to start to focus in and say these are going to be the products that we carry most of the time mm -hmm. your team can get really great at those products yeah. Right. yeah you don't go into apple and expect that somebody in the apple store that services the entire store mm -hmm. yeah you have people you who the service guy, in specific the, yeah. areas yeah. Yeah. and they really are the experts and you trust them mm -hmm. yeah and the way that we've copy and pasted the apple store doesn't create consumer trust Gotcha. doesn't result in envisioning the yep. product in your life okay. and then aesthetically just feels cold, mm -hmm. cold barren yeah. corporate right and you walk out the store being like was that a cannabis store was that a technology yeah. Yeah. store yeah. yeah how does it resonate with me and my connection to the culture and the environment that's yeah. interesting yeah. exactly yeah. interesting yeah that to add to that too i like i come from a b2b sales world sales training and like in you know when we typically when you think of typical salespeople you know, the first thought that comes to mind is, you know, some smarmy used, kill, so used car salesperson, right? Try to convince yeah. us of why we need stuff, you know, to buy this, yeah. why we're better. You know, looking in cannabis retail, we're all selling the same products, right? You know, maybe different areas of the, the province or the city have different things to cater to their different markets. But what I find that doesn't happen enough, and this is what I have great pride with, with our staff and, you know, Spirit Leaf as a whole, um, is being able to cater to the exact needs of the customer. So that means taking the time to ask questions to find out what is the experience that they're looking for, for example. Um, what are they trying to uh, help, what ailment are they trying to help solve maybe? Uh, how are they trying to deal with, um, you know, we call it pain points. What is going on in the world that would justify needing something as opposed to trying to convince somebody why they need something from an intellectual point of view, as, a po as opposed to what we need to be doing more is connecting on a more emotional level uh, before we offer a solution. How, what is it that they need? What is the concern that they're trying to solve before we offer that solution? And I find when you do that, that interaction um, is just much greater. And the, the, the experience for the consumer, the customer is, is, is much greater, much more enlightening, and you, you can build better loyalty that way. Um, and 
they know that you're not just trying to sell them something. You know, we're trying to fulfill a need. That's ultimately what it is. But it seems totally. like that certainly. Yeah, totally. Um, I was gonna ask you. Yeah. When you're in a store, what are you looking like? What does an emotional connection look like for you? It's hard to say. So the the one thing I hate is is to to Clifford's, Clifford's point, the the used car sales, the the iPad. When I see the iPad approach me, with with a person behind it, that drives me fucking crazy. I can't because it's it's I'm I'm now pressured to do this. The barrier. Exactly. It's it's I feel pressure to 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 speed this transaction up because I know there's people behind me that just want weed quick, right? So what I want is is self serve, totally fine. But the the ones that come up to me with iPads are a barrier. Now what I do look for is is more the, the, the sections, the organization of the actual place. Because I have very specific wants in, in certain categories of mm -hmm. canvas. So I want to look at what they, where those sections are and compare and contrast. None of it's really price-based. That there's, there's a little bit of brand-based, but I want to see what else is there, what else is new. A lot of people carry the same thing. So it's, it's more the vibe of the store too. Mm -hmm. Also, they get points if they're playing like something that's super cheesy stoner, like the specials. Okay. Or if they're, play, or if they're playing like old school hip hop. Okay. Because that 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 it's has my vibe. That has my vibe, right? Meeting you where you want to be met. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Yeah. For me, I uh, I, I think the biggest problem is um, is brand loyalty. Like there's a concept called uh, analysis paralysis, right? When there's so many opportunities out there, so many product choices, and and because there's such a lack of marketing in the industry, there's no brand loyalty and really awareness. Like frankly, there's a lot of times when people will buy something that wasn't selling they start buying it just because it was mentioned. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, this is for new. sure. And if I mean, that's connect. kind of branding 101 mm -hmm. too, to, mm -hmm. to be in the back part of the, of the mind. But at the same time, when you rush people, when you rush people through that transaction yes. and you have that analysis paralysis of all of those, all of those uh, products, right. you end up, I guarantee that people end up just defaulting to the one that's closest to eye level or the one that costs the right right amount, right? That's merchandising. Yeah. Exactly. But as an, <laughs> as an operator, <laughs> what role do you play in that? In, in what in in dealing with analysis paralysis right so it and that that goes to my point of understanding what that consumer is trying to experience before recommending something so for example you have a big bucket of products that we offer somebody right yeah. but if somebody is looking for something for example to have a more euphoric uplifting energizing experience why am I gonna mention this really dank heavy indica kush right yeah. that is exactly the last thing they want to be spoken right now so that just takes out these amount of products. Okay, well, now we can talk about that experience further. Is it more to be more social, more creative? Um, then we can talk about the different qualities, the price points. Are you looking to get like, you know, really high, you know, from a potency standpoint, or are you looking to get more of a multi-dimensional experience? So now yeah. we're looking at higher quality terpene products, for example. Um, and then the, qual the quantity, for example, or and just the consumption method. So having all these products that we're talking about narrowed down to this tiny little basket, it makes it a lot less overwhelming for me as the as the, the concierge or my staff as the concierge to offer something that is in line with what the experience they're looking for, as opposed to well, we got indicas here, we got sativas here. What are you looking for? You know, this is the good stuff. Oh, it's too expensive. Well, that's the cheap stuff. So it's helping guide the consumer to follow that path to, to buying in the most efficient way possible while recognizing their needs. That's sort of the, the focus. So to I that mean. to that end, I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Where do you sit on the on each one of the each one of the dispensaries creating their own map for that? Like mm -hmm. like have you ever, like like Blunt and Cherry has has their their zones, right? Mm -hmm. And Hemisphere has has their whatever they call them. But where do you guys sit on that? Where where they're categorizing things in in the either the potency scale or the CBD factor or the the indica sativa, even though those may be antiquated measurements for it, mm -hmm. they are still categorizing it. Where do you sit on that? I'm like, do it in the way that your team and your customer wants to flow that way. Gotcha. I, so align like, that with your brand to align it, it with your brand. Yeah. It doesn't all need to be the same. I don't think that there's a right or a wrong gotcha. answer at this point. It's okay. more so what you do with it once it's in there. And that comes to the retail retail aspect of it, right? Like yeah. ca cater to your to your demographic, to your area, to your population, and all of that, right. like, and make it yeah. make it hit points with that. And if you're in calling when you've got snowboard, make make it make it a genre of that. I don't that. make it a genre of something yeah. else. Exactly. Yeah. And there's like this opportunity 
to be flexible right now okay. and reiterate. Okay. We're at a point now where we've got enough data to start to make decisions to change things. Okay. How do we maybe reconsider how the store is organized or what those zones might be? Okay. Yeah. And then like as a just a simple, simple process, we know that people can't think through more than three options mm. effectively. Yeah. Mm. So they should only ever have three. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So how do you make that happen? Yeah, gotcha, That's yeah. a big, like for us, when we're in a store, right. yeah. how do we know what the three are? How is the bud tender gonna walk through the three? Yeah. How are their points so and that- qualify and quantify mm -hmm. each one of those three. Because you might have somebody like me that just, just goes to the CBD scale and those those three are irrelevant to mm -hmm. me. So make sure that these hit the points for the people that aren't buying right, what yeah. I'm buying. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah.